So indeed, uh, although I passed through Goa several times because nearby uh, Tibetan settlement, so previously uh, uh, to Goa was more convenient. Go there and return uh, to Goa. So now this time, uh, because of Chief Minister and some other concerned people, you see they arrange a meeting. So first time, so share some of my thoughts, some of my experience with people from this place. So indeed, I'm great honor. Uh, by nature, uh, every sentient being, particularly every human being, uh, by innate, by nature, want happiness and do not want suffering. Even animals, insects, also have that same desire. And also, everyone has the same right uh, to achieve happy life and overcome problems, suffering. So it is really logical and I said they are right to pursue happy life. Now, the happiness, when I say, when I use the word happiness, uh, is not m mainly certain sort of satisfaction on physical, sensorial level, uh, but mainly a deeper mental level. So there's some kind of, not necessarily feeling of pleasure, but some kind of feeling of satisfaction. That I usually refer as a happiness. Uh, so, so it is important to make distinction, certain satisfaction, which come through sensorial sort of consciousness or sensorial feeling. Ka. 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 Uh, through sensorial inputs. Hmm? Like seeing something nice through eye consciousness, that you get some satisfaction. And listen to music, uh, you get some satisfaction. At a good taste, you get some satisfaction. These mental level satisfaction entirely depend on external matters. But since external sort of these sort of facilities are not remain continuously, so as soon as that disappear, that end, the mental satisfaction also reduces. But only memory. Other level, mental level, deep satisfaction. I think through, or say they, uh, I think, meaningful life, serving other people. Through that way, you get deep satisfaction. Uh, physically, it may be a little difficult, but mentally, you get deep satisfaction. All people, all people, all, all people, who have faith towards God, tremendous faith, that also brings deep inner satisfaction. Then also practice of some meditation, that also brings uh, inner deep satisfaction. These satisfaction not relying or not depend on external facility or external matters. And as deep satisfaction 
out of mental thinking that more duration to it more durable so now here i think this is the uh, uh, i think is important to to know two levels of satisfaction otherwise we simply see the some sort of, some kind of satisfaction out of the sensorial feeling so that uh, a person who have some sort of uh uh sorta an external facilities seeing something nice or hearing some nice things uh, till that there that person get some satisfaction when these are not there or eventually uh when you sick or when you uh reach very close to the old age uh cannot see cannot hear properly then because that person lack of experience certain so sort of deep satisfaction through mental level uh, only depend on external matters then that person really uh the uh, finds difficult boring really boring i notice i think we everybody notice this is a uh, uh say in some tourist sort of spots some old people some retired people go there uh these people is in their own home sitting then they really feel uh boring a difficult time passes get some experience of deeper level of satisfaction then remain like hermit life you get tremendous sort of satisfaction happiness so because lack of sort of that cause of the understanding about a deeper level of satisfaction people everywhere rushing material development material values only count money wealth power fame or superficial sort of sources of happiness not genuine i often say telling people uh those of the uh as they uh rich people or rich or any people you see who wear some sort of rings even so high cost wear high cost rings i feel get some oh i have nice ring uh you get some satisfaction in deeper level if you kiss that ring that ring no matter cause of the cause of expensive that ring no capacity to respond to your affection <laughs> instead that one small cat or dog if you show your kindness your genuine sort of sense of sort of affection they can respond i feel that's more i said that more useful so we human being if you show other genuine sincerity genuine for said it i want to say a love and a compassion Uh, then you receive sort of equal sort of nice response from them that's the way to build happy family happy community not just the wealth money money wealth 
may bring extreme sense of competition and that brings suspicion so, as, so, as soon as some kind of uh, destructive competition feeling develop then you immediately feel something little bit distance that creates suspicion doubt on that basis impossible to develop genuine friendship because friendship entirely depend on trust so money i think of course if you use properly properly then okay less danger otherwise just think it money money alone think material value alone then there is real danger to diminish basic human values our life become very much artificial some my friend uh, some some businessman uh, sometimes i jokingly telling uh, uh, telling telling them uh, you are slave of money running here and there here and there always think money money for money they themselves not necessarily very happy when we sit together often as a urin that was a sigh very yes, sigh uh, often i notice <laughs> like that looks not very happy <laughs> some kind of anxiety too much sort of on city kasore dimin justin ka mar mar mat chusan de stress to us stress so that firstly i want to to share with you so we need material development because we have this physical uh physical body so therefore for physical comfort material facilities are highly necessary so material development also very important with help of technology and science really marvelous very good but if we put all our hope on material value and modern science and technology uh, i am not very sure we human being truly become peaceful and happy people look to the century as far as development of technology and science and these things highly developed but these marvelous human achievement also becoming additional sort of causes of destruction suffering fear i often tell you say at a scientific meeting science and technology is really great achievement human being human intelligence but unfortunately sometimes these achievement becoming uh, additional destructive forces so in or so therefore uh the 20th century according to some historian 20th century in within 20th century over 200 millions of people killed through violence all the violence is part of human of human history but the destructive power is much increased therefore the more people more casualty like that uh, so now uh, we must uh, we should not neglect about our inner values now that i really feel very important now as i mentioned before i myself at age of 16 uh i lost my freedom and age 24 
my laws to my own country. And last now more than 51 years, constant sort of heartbreaking news. Of course, some positive news also there, but largely some sad news come. And on top of that, almost entire Tibetan population inside as well as outside. As it put a lot of trust and hope on me. So I have some kind of special sort of moral responsibility feeling. But the situation is helpless. But I never touch tranquilizer. <laughs> <laughs> Of course, I'm Buddhist, so it's a Buddha prohibited drinking alcohol <laughs> or drugs. So, uh, but my, my mind, I think comparatively, quite peaceful. The heartbreaking sort of news come. A little disturbances, but remain short period. The deeper emotional level, I can keep my calmness, calm mind. So we have the same ability if you have more awareness and also look everything more holistic way. Then we can utilize human potential properly. Otherwise, this potential just remain kasa, dormant. So awareness, uh, like our knowledge, unless you study, this sort of potential of knowledge remain dormant. Through study, uh, first class, second class, third, tenth, fifteenth, like that, then this sort of potential develops. Potential then got the opportunity to sort of blossom. Right. Similarly, uh, calm mind, also we, everybody, I think calm mind based on open heartedness, warm heartedness, everybody have same. So long we born from mother, and so long we experience tremendous mother's affection. We have same potential. So uh, that I want to, to share with you. So then these inner sort of quality or inner sort of what's it, human, human human value uh, uh, in order to uh, uh, develop that I feel three ways. Number one, theistic religious faith. Believe God, creator. God, in the sense, infinite love, compassion. And consider God as our own father. This very life created by God. So it's a tremendous sort of closeness feeling with God. The God's own nature is infinite love. So then naturally, there is more willingness to practice love, compassion. That brings automatically a sense of tolerance, uh, patience, and also self-discipline. These automatically come. That's one way to promote this inner value. The second, non-theistic religious tradition, such as Jainism, mainly Jainism and Buddhism. No concept of creator, but ultimately self-creation. It's a bad matter, so worlds, this physicals, very similar Darwinian theory. Just uh, uh, causes conditions and particles. You see, the uh, more combination 
もうそれはすでこれ、ぬぼるめだ。ぜぶぜそうにぬぼるめだ。As the, more,、uh, the components are、like, gathered together, then we see there's the emergent property coming about from these with different potentials. So these are just a law of causality, no creator.、Uh, but then, you see,、uh, according to Indian sort of, as the, sort of common what is the concept, all Indian religion, that's law of karma. Karma means action. So everything due to its own action. Action is the, 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 the That's the main sort of cause, main sort of sources of events. So, karma means action. So, if you do action to help others, to bring more satisfaction, more happiness to others, you get the result that you get more happier. So, you get more happiness as a consequence. If you carry action to harm others, to bring some pains on others, like killing, stealing, or rape, telling l i e so on, some uncomfortable, some sort of pains brought on others. From that action, you get Negative consequences. So, that also, you see, the one way of approach. Because of that, the, since I do not want suffering, I want happiness, so I have to carry positive action to serve others, to help others, never bring harm on others. So, that's the way to develop. Was it a、uh, kind attitude or loving kindness attitude towards others? So, this different way of approach, but same purpose. This is one thing. Then there must be a third one. I believe there must be a third one. Some my Christian friend and also some Muslim friend、uh, have the view. Moral, any moral ethics must be based on religious faith.、Uh, I have a different view. Ethics, some level of ethics, even animals also have、so、that kind of, sort of practice. I think, like dogs. Make discussion of distinction. One stranger c o m e he, he or she act a little different, so protect their home.、Uh, so there's some kind of absolute loyalty to the person who's feeding, who sort of、uh, kinds. So, the dog, I think,、uh, no, no, uh, not ability to knowledge the, this is my boss, but anyone who really k i n d them, really showing sincerity, truthful, then they bring loyalty. So, that's ethics. And then the basis of ethics is, I believe, compassion, affection. That's a biological factor. The child, as soon as born, the child's side towards mother, of course, no knowledge who is that person, but emotionally, biologically, entirely depend on that person. So long that person t o u c h child f e e l very happy. Feel safe, separate, unsafe, unhappy. The mother's side also, 
sort of there is some kind of sort of sort of the, the immense sort of enthusiasm to take care of the child. That enthusiasm brought by love. He is also a biological factor. Even animal, animal mother really willing to sacrifice her own life in order to save on their youngster. We notice that. So therefore, these are biological factors, not come through religious faith. So therefore, there must be moral ethics without touching religious faith. So that I usually describe secular ethics. Because of India's reality, there is so many different faiths here. So if you uh, take so the ground of ethics, one religious faith, then what faith? There are complications there. So when India's the forefather were. Uh, the nation's father, like Gandhiji, Rajendra Prasad, and also Dr. Ambedkar, these great lawyers, great scholars, when they drafting India's constitution, they felt, according to India's reality, secular secularism is fit, suitable to this country. So, according Indian concept of secularism, does not mean disrespect of religion, but respect all religion, no preference this religion or that religion. According to my uh, close friend, Dr. Advani, uh, once he told me uh, one factor for the success of democracy in this country is the thousand-year-old Indian tradition, the among sort of thinkers, scholars, different views. One sort of thinkers' view is uh, there's no existence of after this life, or no existence of heaven, no existence of God, nothing. But this life. So that school of thought. In Sanskrit word, charvaka. So, nihilism. So, he says, he told me, among thinkers, philosophers, very critical about that view, nihilism. So, argue or criticize. However, they refer the person who holds that view, uh, refer sage. Rishi, Rishi. Rishi means sage. So that means respect. So India's sort of what is it, the secularism also respect non believer. This thousand year old tradition. So in modern time, the India's constitution must, the constitution, the sense, the senses must respect non believer also. So that's very broad. So my so the usual sort of the way of promotion these human values. So of course, those people who have faith, and they have plenty of reasons to, uh, to practice these things. And then non-believer, I usually see, use three reasons. One, our common experience, as I briefly mentioned, we everybody born from our mother. We survived here because of our mother's tremendous affection, tremendous care, tremendous love. I think within this sort of uh, hall, few hundred people here, outwardly, everyone is more or less sort of the same, smart. But in deep insight, those individuals who receive maximum affection at the time of very young age, 
deep inside, much calm, much happier. Then those individuals at that age, lack of mother's care or some abuse, some sort of what's today, negative attitude from mother, from mother in deep inside. Some kind of sense of insecurity uh, usually happen. So such person, even small cause, uh, really you see, cause much. Uh, those individuals who deep inside calm, uh, even some sort of what's today, uh, some irritation. Uh, comes, they can tolerate more easily. So that's common experience. Then, uh, I mean, uh, then our com use common sense. Our neighbors, those whom, those family, no matter what, rich, poor, or educated, uneducated, but the home full of affection, that home much happier. Even they may feel some sort of anxiety or uh, next day or uh, how to lead their life. But even then, feel happy. Then those family may be very rich, very sort of influential, but something lacking in that home, that's human affection, then often quarrel, or sometimes depression. I also have the experience to notice some people, at once we start talk, joyful, because in their inner world is much calm, much peaceful. Some people, when we start talk, some difficult because in the deep inside, some anxiety, some sort of that, anxious or something, anxiety or something. It's very clear. So therefore, uh, using common sense, we can uh, we can realize the importance of this uh, inner peace or affectionate attitude. Then third, most important, is scientific finding. I think till, I think later part of 20th century, the modern science uh, not much pay attention about inner world or mind. Even some radical materialist, uh, they even deny existence of such thing as a mind only brain. But later part of 20th century, now the scientific sort of research highly developed, particularly the brain science, right? neuron, uh, neuro, neuron science, uh, and also medical science also now begin to realize patient's emotion is so important for their physical wealth and for recover or preventive measure. So, uh, uh, since later part of the century, among the scientists, uh, some really pay attention about mind, about emotion. So they carry some sort of experiment. Uh, number of cases, uh, because it's the last now uh, almost thirty years, I had sort of. Almost sort of, and almost sort of regularly meeting, talk, discuss with scientists. Uh, so they, uh, some the, the number of cases they carry some kind of experiment. Some group of people uh, before they start some sort of experiment or program, they check blood pressure. They amount of stress on these things, and some other sort of test also should be mentioned. Uh, then, few weeks, or 
two weeks, three weeks, uh, some short sort of training of mind. Often you see, think about compassion, love. After uh, two, three weeks, again test. Blood pressure reduced. Amount of stress also reduced. Uh, recently I was in Emory University. Uh, they also carry some sort of experiment, some student. Uh, after a few weeks, they notice their students' concentration power on their subject much improve. Usually American sort of the student always look television like that. <laughs> so their mind easily scattered. So their concentration power improve. The sharpness of their mind also improve. Uh, then their social sort of conduct with other sort of fellow student also improve. So as a result, individual student become much happier. So these, and then another thing, according to medical scientist, constant fear, constant anger, or hatred. Actually, some scientists say, they eating our immune system. Very bad for health. The other hand, more compassionate mind, very helpful to sustain our immune system. And for recovery, speeded rest, speeded recovery, also you see, very much depend on calm mind. So one occasion, one doctor, is mentioned, I, two sort of uh, guinea pigs, uh, both some injuries, one guinea pig uh, with another guinea pig, one put alone. So the other one who have one another guinea pig sort of companion, that uh, again is a biological factor. The guinea pig is licking the wounded one. So the recovery, that guinea pig who received constantly others' affection, mm -hmm. much faster recovery, uh, they found. And then also I have one sort of stories, uh, story or uh, one sort of presentation, one scientist, medical scientist, one, one occasion in, I think, Columbia University or something, in his sort of report or pre presentation, uh, according to his sort of uh, I mean, experiment. Those people who often express the word I, my, me, these people have greater chance of heart attack. <laughs> Although he didn't explain, but then I felt, oh, it is uh, quite logical. That those people is who often express I, 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 that. That's reflect his or her real sort of way of thinking. So this extreme self-centered sort of feeling. So that kind of attitude there, even small problem uh, of him or of her, appears something very big, unbearable. The people uh, who think more holistic or whole community or whole humanity, then your individual problem may not be that much sort of significant. Part of the problem, but okay. Uh, that kind of feeling. So that makes differences emotional level. One small problem, unbearable. One even serious problem, okay. This is a problem. I have to work, but okay, that kind of attitude. So I think that makes differences. And then also, it's, I often used to tell people, compassionate heart here, it automatically opens our inner door. 
Through that way, we can uh, reach out others very easily. Too much self-centered attitude there. That inner door closed. Then that person finds it very difficult to re reach out other people. Then we are biologically social animal. Our successful life entirely depends on others. No matter how one single person powerful, but his or her or the successful life, happy life, entirely depend on rest of the community. So the rest, rest of the community is basis of your own successful life, happy life. If you mentally develop some kind of suspicion, some kind of distance from that, how can you get a successful life or inner peace? Once you develop genuine sense of concern of the well-being of others, true sense of brotherhood, sisterhood there, uh, then you get sort of the trust. After all, we are social animals. Therefore, cooperation is very essential. Cooperation only comes on the basis of friendship. Friendship comes on the basis of trust. Trust comes from genuine warm-heartedness. Warm-heartedness there, no room of lie, no room of bully, no room of killing, stealing. Uh, killing means, of course, suicide is something exceptional, but otherwise, you see, the killing means other. Stealing, others are well, as well. Well, abuse or sexual or what is it? Because I should say, rape, uh, lie, everything. You see, on other. Therefore, if the person develop genuine sense of concern of well-being of other, then there is no room killing, well, or action of killing, stealing, rape. All the lie, all these, no basis. You just look other as your own brothers, sisters, as dear as yourself. So this we can we can train through reasoning, not through prayer, uh, not through deep meditation, but simply using our common sense. So that I really feel we need more effort. And that kind of sort of sort of education, knowledge, not come through church, not come through temple, but should be in through regular school, education, edu education field. Uh, there are now people in this country also recently we had a serious meeting in Delhi about these things with scientists and some Indian uh, spiritual masters also participated. Uh, some of them, you see, actually, you see, carrying some sort of, what's the day, education of warm heartedness. So we are, you see, thinking some sort of research, more research work, and make some kind of plan how to introduce in school from primary school way from kindergarten up to university, the way of educate warm-heartedness, not talking about religion, but secular basis. That, I think, we really need. So after all, the very purpose of education is try to reduce gap, appearance, and reality in order to our sort of way of approach should, uh, in order to way of approach be realistic. So the education purpose is try to know the reality. So that reduce gap, appearance and reality. So now through that way, we can, we can bring conviction to young people 
warm heartedness is the best way to get maximum happiness and good health for yourself. That we can we can educate. So usually I sort of explaining or explain or use the word be selfish. We are human beings by nature. Every sentient being selfish. Then selfish to self is right. Maximum care oneself, right. Those people who some kind of self hatred, such person impossible to develop compassion towards others. So self love is the sound of base seed that that extend to others. That is compassion. So they are, so we are selfish, but should be wise selfish rather than foolish selfish. Too much extreme, short-sighted, narrow-minded, selfish, self-destruction. Often it happens. So if you really love ourselves, uh, you should use our intelligence properly. How to bring maximum interest for your own well-being. So that's the way uh, I usually call secular way uh, of educating these inner values. So, that's all. Now I will set some questions. Sir, I have a very simple question. I don't know whether it's logical, right or wrong. Oh. Uh -huh. I would like to know what is the purpose of life. And second thing, whether you believe in destiny and what's the role of destiny in human life. Purpose of life. Uh, I think due to different philosophical uh, sort of view, I think different answer. Uh, but generally, uh, from Buddhist viewpoint, it's nature. I is there, nature. Mind is there, nature. <laughs> Desire for happiness to overcome suffering by nature. That's the Buddhist viewpoint. I, th I think the secular way, I think that's the answer. Uh, now, question is whether there is a real purpose. I, I, I usually use it to describe the very purpose of our life is for happiness. This I believe. The simple reason that our life. Uh, I mean, the future of the future, where this is no guarantee. Uh, but we survive because on hope. If we lost our hope, then that very mental attitude shorten our life. In the worst case, even suicide. So since. So, since you see, our survival is very much based on hope. So, hope means for good, not for bad. Therefore, the very purpose of our life, we, from that viewpoint, I can say happiness, happy life is our purpose of our life. That was the second part of the question. Destination. Destiny. Uh, something really fixed and we have no power to change that. That kind of destiny, uh, of course, according to uh, different sort of faith, maybe, but uh, from uh, the viewpoint of secular way or viewpoint of law of causality, uh, no destiny. Things shaped because of its own causes and conditions. So causes and conditions change. The shape change. For example, some unhealthy person, body. If you remain that way, some, dest some destination eventually 
more sort of uh, becoming more weaker, weaker, weaker. But if you make effort, for example, exercise or certain sort of the taking care about uh, your diet, then you see that can change. So, uh, certain destiny rest up to today. Because your new awareness, new effort will start today, within a week, that destiny can change. So that's our view. Hmm? And that's it. Next question. Sir, will you please tell us how we can free from hatred, aversion, and craving? Will you please also focus some light on Zen? Oh, here, here, here. Oh, yes. Hatred, sir. There are many levels of hatred. Uh, I think hatred in the sense of some kind of ill feeling towards uh, the troublemaker or we may call enemy or even your friend do to something wrong you may develop some kind of uh, anger a negative feeling uh, but you see anger uh, one part of our emotion, some negative situation come, some kind of danger for you, then anger come as a protector. Biologically, well, it happen, it happened like that. It is necessary to some extent. And desire, attachment, also biological factor. Uh, acquire uh, to bring the positive thing for your survival. Anger, expel thing which harm for your survival. Now, hatred in the sense you see, because of some anger then that bring some kind of inner sort of uh, negative emotion which then remain for a longer period, some kind of ill feeling towards that. That I think, uh, now for example my own sort of uh, case, hatred, I think almost none. Anger quite often comes if, if something, if some people doing something wrong. Oh, I lost my temper. <laughs> that sort of some harsh word. But after that, finished. Nothing. And nothing remained here. Even if those people who really, now for example, 2008 uh, crisis inside Tibet. Uh, uh, afternoon, 10th March, 2008, I received the information uh, in some part of Hassa city, some peaceful demonstration is starting. So immediately I developed sort of same experience which occurred in 1959 10th March. Feeling of helplessness, hopelessness, fear, anxiety. But then 2008 sort of crisis, then I realized those uh, Chinese officials who on the spot is making this decision, visualize them and the practice of take and give. That means take their anger, fear, uh, hatred, take to myself and give my own patience, compassion, the forgiveness, spirit of forgiveness to them, this kind of sort of exchange way. Oh, that practice, immense help. Of course, uh, not solving the problem has, uh, I don't know, no effect. But 
in order to keep my mental level peace. That practice is immensely useful. So, so you can uh, just simply pray to eliminate anger is unrealistic. <laughs> so the hatred also is a, some kind of sort of result of certain your way of thinking, certain your emotion. So the the causal level, right? The Buddhist psychology, you see, the, when we deal with negative emotion, when negative emotion fully developed, difficult to control. So the proper way is the initial stage, uh, such as hatred, not fully developed, but able to develop. That is the uh, that, that that is the time you deal with that. Usually, you see, they say. Irritation, immediate one. Unpleasant feeling. Uh, that is the source or ground of anger. The anger develops hatred. So therefore, unpleasant sort of feeling, about unpleasant feeling develop. That time, think more about you say, what use? If you fully develop anger, the anger alone eliminates that problem? No, never. Anger, uh, something, uh, some negative things happen, unhappy things happen. If you let anger develop, hatred develop, that hatred alone won't help to solve the problem. Instead, Destroy your own health. Destroy your own the holistic view. Therefore, thinking these of line, then the unpleasant feeling about to develop. Then thinking these line, then unpleasant feeling reduce. That reduce the source of anger, source of hate. That's the way. And also something like. The weak body, even small sort of symptoms of virus, may cause very serious illness. But your basic body element healthy, uh, immune system is healthy, strong. And even the more serious sort of virus, the virus if it comes, won't disturb your health. So similarly, basic mental attitude is healthy. Then these, you see, uh, small, small sort of, sort of problems will not disturb your mind. Even, you see, there's some disturbance about to start, you can deal. Uh, through practice, you, when you develop anger, you can separate you yourself from this anger. Uh, you can then watch about anger. As soon as you yourself separate from the anger, from anger emotion, your your basic mind then watching the anger emotion, then automatically anger emotion reduces. Usually the anger or attachment develop. Your whole mind, your whole whole yourself, something unified that anger or attachment, then difficult to tackle, like that. So these, I think, I think Buddhist psychology, and also I think Hindu psychology, I think all those Indian sort of tradition which mentioned about practice of Samadhi and Vipassana, both practice of Vipassana and Samadhi is mental quality. So naturally, more explanation about mind, how to how to sort of tackle about mind is there. So, uh, uh, as you are Indian, isn't it? Huh? Yes, 
Oh, very good. So, so in any way, these are India's tradition. So I often, you see, when I pass through uh, different towns or different places, uh, I found many sort of what's a day temples, hmm. Hindu temples or Shivalingam or what's the name, uh, Durkha or like that, or Vishnu, or Ganesh, uh, and all the Lord Shivaji. And then I often see, uh, maybe better, more construction about small, small library, 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 where the follower of Hinduism or Buddhism or Jainism can study and occasionally discuss, rather than, uh, rather than just one statue and and go like that. I I often say telling Tibetan and also some Chinese, they fund uh, to uh, uh, to make uh, Buddha statue. I often telling them, I'm Buddhist. I have deep sort of admiration and respect to Buddha, but Buddha statue never speak. Uh, so, instead of speak less sort of object, better to print more books. That's more important. So, so you study more. All this information in this country last almost 3,000 years, this information already there. So now what's lacking? Now, uh, about billion Indian, I think ordinary Indian, many of them very faithful, religious minded, but uh, never pay sufficient attention, study. That is, that is sort of a sort of mistake. To they, practice medicine, oh. to practice medicine, doctors have to take the Hippocratic oath. Is there a particular public oath that you would suggest politicians actually adopt universally? Karsa, doctor. Ka. I'm not a politician, <laughs> but you know, in front of Indian Parliament in Delhi, uh, now I think many many years ago, you see, uh, they uh, constructed one Gandhi Gandhiji's huge statue in the front of Parliament, so the. O open ceremony or something, I also there. So I just express the parliamentarians, those politicians, when passing to Gandhi's statue, they must remember about Gandhi's truthfulness. <laughs> so that also. Now, you see, I think during freedom struggle, those Indian leaders like Mahatma Gandhi, Sada Patel, or all these, you see, freedom fighters, really selfishness, selfishness, ah, selfless, and fearless, they really carry their work honestly, truthfully. So I often telling my Indian friends, now, although India now since got independence now more than 50 years past, but still 
in the leaders need the spirit of during freedom fighters that was the spirit that still need honest transparent truthful self selfless that i think very important like that and then then media india is democratic country comparatively i think this country is really much more stable because of democracy and also the independent judiciary one time in delhi one one of the meeting uh, many judges were or lawyers uh, there uh, i praise this country independent judiciary and then also i learn teasing them the people who involve justice if they themselves are little corrupt <laughs> then is it that's really disaster <laughs> so it is some certain certain things to see happen i think the huge country some sort of unhealthy things it happen understandable but overall this country is very very stable uh, much better than all those neighboring states uh and this has been uh so still you see we need more effort and also i often is telling indians or media people uh, media people not only in india but also is everywhere uh whenever i met some uh, media people i always telling them you know, media people in modern society in particular the democratic country media people have very very important role firstly as i mentioned earlier these basic human values the secular ethics and religious harmony in these matter media people have important role to to teach public not only just the news but these basic sort of human values are very very important then second the media people have special role to check so media people should have long nose as long as elephant nose <laughs> now then smell everywhere in the front like me here very nice but very important to smell what is behind what is going on behind that is very important so the religious people like myself and the politician like chief minister <laughs> or some member of parliament or in some businessman uh, some sort of public sort of like uh, uh, social workers ah and media themselves also you see should check you really caring your work sincerely no oh. or not very important so then make clear to the public what is really going on that's very important because it's now china because lack of freedom of media so a lot of corruption there so one lack of independent judiciary and second no free information so therefore these people who have power then they are quite free hand so in the so in the free country uh, wherever i met you see the media people you should investigate what is going on thoroughly and then inform the public honestly truthfully unbiasedly that's very important Good afternoon. Oh, oh, yes. Good afternoon, sir. Here. Good up. I'm here. Oh, I'll yes. come in front if you want to see me. Oh. Uh I have a question. You can cast it away if it's silly. You have all the right. <laughs> you know, you spoke about money. 
Oh. And you said money is not everything. Money can't give you happiness. Yes. Absolutely agreed. But I also believe that with money you can buy things. Money can't directly make you happy, but m money can buy certain things which can make your life comfortable. Hmm. So in that context, anything in the Buddhist psychology where you can teach us how to draw a balance between acquiring wealth and acquiring mental peace. If you use common sense properly, we have this physical, this body. We need food, shelter, and a certain sort of thing, uh, sort of things, clothes, which brings comfortable for this health, for this body, and also some sort of a uh, material facility to build healthy body. Uh, now, in, I think people hear this for the whole, I think everybody, I think compare when I pass into village to village, some very poor. I think they never sort of experience so this kind of comfortable sort of sitting. So the uh, not only, uh, I mean, the global level as well as the national level, this gap rich and poor, really very sad, very, very sad. Uh, we have to pay seriously, uh, serious attention about how to reduce this gap rich and poor, global level and also national level. India's economy, and uh, I think, grow quite well. And meantime, open society, unlike China. Uh, so I think India's economic growth is more healthy. Uh, so meantime, I always did the expression, real transformation of India must come from rural area. Just a few big cities development is nice, but not the real answer uh, for this problem. So the we should those people who have some from, so who have some means where to look at these problems, uh, we should pay more attention about the development in the rural area. So material development, money very important. Without money, through prayer, nothing can be done. I think Karoli. I I think last year. I think last year. Where? Last year, one year ago, uh, at Patna, Bihar Chief Minister, President Chief Minister, a very able person. You know, he built one Buddhist, Buddhist Vihara at Patna. So he invited me uh, to, to participate in the celebration. So I went there. Then he mentioned in his speech, uh, Besides other thing, he mentioned the, with Buddha's blessing, Bihar state rapidly develop. He mentioned. Then my turn. Uh, I know Chief Minister uh, quite well. So then I, I, I told, I respond to him. If Bihar state uh, rapid development due to Buddha's blessing, then Bihar state much earlier should develop. <laughs> Last 2,500 years, Buddha's blessing already there. <laughs> but the Buddha's blessing entirely depend on able chief minister's hand. <laughs> so again, this shows Buddha's blessing not sufficient. We must act. Action uh, more important than prayer. So, uh, so the actual sort of Kasoda transformation of India, not just the puja, but work hard. And those richer family provide those poorer section of the people education, 
technology skill. And a few days ago, I was in uh, Mongod. You see, I I think I think more than two I think two decades ago. I think more than 20, 30 years ago. One local people, you see, they are thinking to set up one Kazada technology sort of what's today training. So then I donated uh, 100. 100,000, one, one, one million, one million, one million, ten million, one crore. Uh, I prom promised some donation. And the state government also provided some fund. So now, this time, they completed. So they invited me uh, to participate in their sort of celebration, open, open celebration. Uh, so they are, so, so such things in the rural area, some sort of the training of what's today. Skillful, yes. skills. Uh, I think that's very, very important. So this material part. Now, I, I want to ask you uh, uh, the question of uh, oh, there, 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 there. Oh, uh, do you have experience of mental mental level, not physical level, but mental level? Sometimes. Happy mood, sometimes bad mood. Do you experience that? Hmm? Oh. So when you have some kind of bad mood, and if you carry some uh, sort of what to say, bunch of a uh, thousand rupees, uh, kasa, kasa, no, thousand rupees of uh, notes, mm. then shouting those big shops, uh, big market. I want to buy peaceful mind. Hmm? <laughs> or, <coughs> or go to some big hospital. I want to get injection for peace mind. Hmm? <laughs> or some very sophisticated sort of factory. Uh, please, uh, please, Kasota, bring me because of the inner peace through some kind of technology, machines or computers like that. <laughs> Perhaps I think they may do hold your brain broad <laughs> and then some robot machine put. <laughs> then, then you will be uh, always indifferent. Move. <laughs> but no feeling. Do you prefer that? So, so I, I'm telling that. So, therefore, now it is quite obvious. Uh, physical comfort through money we can make. Peace of mind you cannot make by money. Peace of mind also equally important, even for health, very important. So, since money cannot bring peace of mind, there must be some other sort of technique some other way. So, obviously, anyone who has this mind or this physical, so obviously we need both. Uh, so, use material facility, but not worship material value. Realize there is limitation uh, because of that money value or material value, knowing that limitation, then some of your mind or some of your energy spent on other fields to bring inner peace. So that's the more balanced way. Now, okay. Oh. So, so your question is not a silly question. Very good question. Thank you. <laughs> Next. Sir. Your Holiness, um, thank you very much for your presence in Goa and India. Uh, my question actually is about that. It seems over the course of the last few months, there are some worrying kind of sign trends in the media over uh, recently over the issue of the Lama who had some funds. There seems to be kind of a sense that 
your presence and the presence of the large Tibetan community in India is starting to perhaps be a kind of uh, inconvenience in India's, uh, you know, vision of global uh, kind of uh, rise. Do you have some fears sir, about or concerns about the future of your community in India and about the stability of your relationship which has existed for so many decades? Thank you. Because I'm in addition. So do it. Our relation, uh, I mean, relation between Tibetan and Indian, uh, not just matter of sort of few decades, but few thousand years. Uh, I always uh, describe our relation is relation between guru and chela. In this case, you, Indian, are guru. We are chela. Uh, for example, since 7th century, 8th century, Buddha Dharma brought to Tibet, flourished. Tibet. Then whole Tibetan way of life changed. Now, Tibetan cultural heritage or Tibetan civilization and the Indian civilization, like uh, Moraja Desai, when he became prime minister, as my usual sort of practice, I wrote letter to congratulation to him. In his reply, he used the word Two civilization, Tibetan civilization, Indian civilization, like two branches of one Bodhi tree. Uh, actually, Bodhi tree grow here, and one branch eventually reach Tibet. So, th so the thousand years, our relation is something very strong. So, as a result, today. Six million Tibetans inside Tibet, physically controlled by the Chinese communists. But 99% of their mind looking this country. That's a fact. My own relation with India, 1956, uh, Buddha Judges Liberation, Governor of India invited me with great difficulties due to the Chinese government, but finally I reached here. We developed some special sort of relation, particularly with Pandit Nehru and then first Indian pres President Dr. Rajendra Prasad. Then 1959, when we become refugee, political asylum. When the government of India received information, I left from Lhasa, uh, going towards India. In cabinet meeting in New Delhi, some different views. Finally, Pandit Nehru decided uh, Dalai Lama must, uh, we must take Political asylum, Dalai Lama, and his followers. So, then, with help of Indian government, Tibetan school, separate Tibetan school started. And then also the Tibetan resettlement in different provinces, particularly in Karnataka state. These sort of was a settlement uh, established. Now, after 51 years, the Tibetan Jewish community quite well settled. 
So, that is the basic sort of relations with this country. Thousand year old sort of relations, uh, then recent, uh, uh, what 51 years sort of, ex sort of the relation like that. And then geographically, Indian border with Tibet, not China proper. Before 1950, no single Indian Juan in these thousand miles of border. After 59, after 50, or after 50, uh, then these military posts started particularly after 62. Uh, even today, the number of soldiers from Ladakh up to Arunachal increasing. So, Tibet issue is also issue of India. So, that is the basic sort of the picture. Then incident, like the Karmapa sort of the money, it's the issue. Actually, I think the carelessness of some of you sort of the uh, uh, work because uh, uh, attendant, the proper sort of registered some kind of the, uh, uh, charity like that. So that's, I think, their mistake. So do do that, this is something happened. But these are nothing, nothing sort of the, that's my view. Your Holiness, oh. is it silly to think that in name of religion, more wars are fought and there is more communal violence? Mm. My question is, is religion a friend of peace or it is a friend of wars? Would there be more peace if religions were abolished? Mm. Would there be more peace if religions were abolished? Because we find that there are more wars and more communal violence mm. in name of different religions. Mm -hmm. uh. Yes, war with the name of religion, uh, that also part of human history. So, so some people have the opinion uh, whether maybe better no religion. But then see no Soviet sort of the uh, skirmish, 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 my way. Uh, some kind of sort of border clash, Sino Soviet, and also Sino Vietnamese sort of conflict. Any involvement of religion? No, I don't think. And First World War, Second World War, Korean War, not due to religion. Even without religion, some kind of conflict uh, uh, always there. So now, the uh, in the past, not only in the past but even today, some conflict in the name of religion. Uh, now we must investigate. In the past, many cases, and even present, I think many cases. Uh, use name of religion, but real sort of cause is either power or economic interest, not religious faith itself, but people manipulate religious name. So innocent people, when touch religious name, then they become very much emotion, so easily can manipulate. So that happened. And then, then secondly, uh, then secondly, the, the religious people themselves, uh, too much attachment towards one's own religious faith. Uh, one time in, in Argentina, one meeting with some scientists, some religious leader, one Chilean physicist, I know him, a great sort of scientist. 
he mentioned at the meeting, he is a scientist, physicist, but he should not develop attachment towards his own scientific field. That's the, that's the point. I am Buddhist. I should not develop attachment towards Buddhism. Because when I develop attachment, my mind biased. With biased mind, I cannot see the reality. So, any religious follower, too much attachment to their religion, then their mental thinking is fanatic. So therefore, the, uh, this is one sort of mistake. And like I think, as I mentioned earlier, you see many Hindus, the ordinary Hindus, I think they really feel I'm Hindu. Uh, I believe, you see, Lord Krishna, uh, Shivaji, like that. Uh, but then if you further question, further sort of question ask, what is Hinduism? I think no answer. Uh, I often see teasing my Indian friends. They sort of, I think, I think every morning, you see, they recite some Sanskrit shloka, shloka of San, San, Sanskrit shloka, recite, but without knowing the meaning. <laughs> then put some flower in the front of Ganesh, or front of some uh, lords. But no idea. What was the real? Dharma. Uh, I think many Muslims, they simply Allah, 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 but not meaning. So what, do not know what is what is the real meaning. One my Muslim friend, uh, he told me, any person who claims as a Muslim, uh, if sort of uh, create if committed bloodshed, actually that is no longer Muslim practitioner. So a genuine Muslim practitioner should extend love and compassion towards the entire Allah's creature. Same the Buddhist of teaching, entire sentence being. And then the meaning of jihad. Deeper sense of meaning of jihad is struggle your own negativeness within yourself. That's meaning of jihad. <laughs> so these, I think, uh, those Muslim, uh, those people who come from Muslim community, doing certain sort of, including terrorism. Now these are actually not know what is the real uh, the teaching of the uh, Quran. Uh, and then, then they develop attachment without knowing the meaning. So this problem starts. Among Tibetan Buddhists also, some are quite fanatic. One group in Mongod, you see, they, they actually, you see, against me. They consider my sort of teaching is not pure Buddhist teaching. <laughs> because my approach is non-sectarian approach within Tibetan Buddhist tradition. Uh, they are very much sectarian. Too much attachment. Like that. Uh, this group, even in murder cases, uh, say, I think seven, I think seven, uh, and uh, 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 three murders to the case, just beside my, my residence. So these are Tibetan Buddhist fanatics. <laughs> so, so it happened. Uh, so, so, uh, so therefore, we should not 
mixed everything. If some uh, some sort of unhealthy things happen, you see, due to name of Hinduism, name of Islam, name of Christian, uh, uh, we must sort of analyze very detail. Otherwise, uh, I think best thing is entire uh, nearly six billion human being must disappear. Then genuine world peace come, <laughs> come, come. So long, human brilliant mind there, some form of problem always there. <laughs> so I think we must pray to God, ultimate creator. So pray, because of pray to God. Now please, time come, entire world should uh, disappear. <laughs> that also silly. I think much better. This marvelous intelligence remain there and uh, cultivate with help of human intelligence infinite altruism. Biological factor, limited love and compassion there. But infinite compassion, love on the basis of as a seed of biological factors sort of compassion, affection, take as a seed. Then with help of human intelligence, that can further develop and reach uh, infinite love, infinite compassion. That's the only human being can do. So human life is marvelous, provided proper understanding about the reality, about our own sort of ability, like that.